Hello, I'm Tom Mintier. Welcome back to tonight. I was getting a bit ahead of myself. Uh, the book is not out yet, but it's being written. So if you'd like to write something to us, we would like to get an email from you. Please send it to tonight at truevisionstv.com. You see it there on your screen, tonight at truevisionstv.com. If you're the old-fashioned kind of person and you'd like to write a letter, we would accept those too. Tonight with Tom Mintier, News 24, Tipco Tower. 118 stroke 1, Rama 6 Road, that's Bangkok 10400. So you can send us a letter or you can send us an email. An email will get here within seconds. A letter will take slightly longer. Uh, Jay, we were talking about writing a book. You're in the process of writing a book. You haven't published yet. Right, I haven't published yet. I, I actually have a book that I've written that I use with my students and when I'm teaching Thai or facilitating classes. Uh, but a book is in the making, uh, both in Thai and in English, uh, about which, which uh, puts into a capsule what I do with companies. And uh, so both mix, bridging the gap between language, culture, and business uh, all together. How did you learn the more difficult language? Like Bahasa Indonesian is not an easy language to learn. Like Mandarin is not easy to learn, I'm told. Right. Uh, th when people say it's, uh, I, I use this, this analogy. Um, I, I, in my classes, there's a planet, a fictitious planet called Flubenflatter. So this Flubenflatterite flies down to Earth and tastes some Japanese green tea. Now, when, it tastes, when he tastes that Japanese green tea, he's so taken aback, he loves it. On the planet Flubenflatter, they have tea, but it's red. They have water, but it's red. The tea and water have exactly the same taste, but on Flubenflatter, they only drink tea for medicinal purposes. So the Flubenflatter goes back and says, right, I'm going to go back home and find the source of green water. Only then can I make green tea. <laughs> and that's what a lot of people do when they come into learning languages. They actually, uh, they, they're trying to compare all these things that they're used to or they think they know about their own language and languages that they speak. And these become filters that make languages like Thai or Chinese quite confusing. Thai doesn't look like English. Chinese uses s syllabic blocks to, to render you know, characters. But if you have a look at the, the language, it's not that different if you know where they're coming in. And then you can, um, yeah, the characters is a bit of a steep learning curve, uh, but there are also tricks. There's a fantastic book in Chinese called um, by TK An, Cracking the Chinese Puzzles. And if anyone reads that, I think that would demystify, say, Chinese for them. Indonesian, uh, many people say Indonesian, you know, it, it might be an easy language because it's written like that. But to speak Indonesian like an Indonesian, just like to speak Thai like a Thai, is just as difficult as any other language. Most Thais I know, when they want to learn to speak English, it's conversation and using it that is important. Right. Uh, when, when, they're, when they're learning English, mm -hmm. right, and that's many times when they're learning English. If you have a look, walk through Bangkok bookstores here, they'll see uh, they're called Galia Sam Tong, the three, uh, three streams of uh, verbs in English, and many of them was, will just sweat blood over learning these three um, verb forms and then can't actually use the language. I try and get a balance. I try and learn from the field but also learn as much as I can about the language and even more than native speakers of it to bring that balance back. I have a friend's son who was studying for a master's degree in London and sent me his thesis to look at. Right. And the thesis in English was a thing of beauty. Right. But I've met this person and his conversation abilities are kind of weak. What about your two children? They're three, four years old. What, are the, what language do they speak at home? My... My daughter, she'll be turning four, my son turning three. They're one year and one week apart. But my daughter, she, I don't think that she'll take the academic stream, but she's got this flair for anything performing or with languages. Each night we, we, before going to sleep, she'll um, count and speak in Thai. The main language at home is Thai. Um, and then that's probably about 85%. And the rest is a, an even mix of Mandarin, Indonesian, uh, English, and now Vietnamese. I, I just counted for her probably about three weeks ago when I first started in Vietnamese. She heard it once. Four days later, she was counting back to me in Vietnamese. So I hope she'll have a flair for it. Uh, my son also, he's, he's only um, turning three, but uh, his language skills are all, you know, they're, they're showing. He's using, I guess, 90% Thai. The rest is English and uh, also some other languages from, uh, that our maid uses. 
What about when you call them by their first name and sternly? What language do you use at home to make, make a point as a father? Thai. Thai? Thai. Uh, that, that gets to the heart. Uh, maybe that'll change in the future, but I, th I think for everybody in our household, Thai is the, if, if you really want to get something made known, that's the language. Yeah, if you, what about you? When you were growing up, what was the language that got your attention? Uh, English was the fundamental language for everything, but when I was with my grandfather and then my circle of friends that were built up through both my grandfather and then people that came in uh, to my life, uh, we had Indonesian was a big language, uh, Mandarin. Um, my grandfather liked to speak a lot of Italian, and then of course on my dad's side, they all speak Hindi. Um, and it's like Fijian Hindi, which is a mixture of Punjabi, Hindi, Gujarati, everything put in together. What is the base language that you learn first and then add on to it? Is it Chinese? You, you mean for other languages other, other, languages, than, other yeah. than English? My, my f language, first language after English that I can remember was Italian. I can remember having the mumps when I was like two, three <laughs> or four. My grandfather had this Italian through pictures book and he came and was speaking Italian with me. And uh, that was there. But, every, but at the same time, I've still got these cards that we used to go through, you know, Japanese and Chinese at the same time. We used to use the brush in Chinese and he'd teach me not just the, in Chinese you have like the radicals, the busol, but not just what the busol meant, but the, um, the, all the parts of the character. So I, I think simultaneous language learning ever since I was a kid. Jay, there's so much to do with languages that we can't do it all in one program. Will you come back on Friday and we can continue this discussion? I'll do my best. Terrific. We'll be back on Friday with a continuation of this interview and join us then. I'm Tom Mintier.